hi guys welcome back to my channel if this is your first time you're welcome my name is Kari and my channel is about history music tourism and lifestyle so today I'm doing something that I've never done before on my YouTube channel I have with me an author his name is John and he's going to tell us about his book about what we need to learn from his book and why he wrote the book to mention a few I'm so interested in the book because it deals with leadership in Nigeria okay so I'm going to hand over to him now for him to talk about the book and enlighten us about the book and what the book entails to mention the fear. So stay tuned guys. Good day everybody. My name is Ekbeno John Ukut. I am the author of the book Odudu. The Ban of a Nation. The book is a drama, a play. So, Odudu, The Ban of a Nation, has a setting in Ayemeka community, which is a fictional community in Akwaibom State. And there is no community called Ayemeka, so it is a fictional community. But the the play has uh, some Ibibio languages embedded in between. So it clearly shows Ibibio culture because we had a lot of things that had to do with Ibibio culture. So it has a setting in the Ibibio community of Akwaibom State. But the community where it is situated, Ayemeka community, is a fictional community. It does not exist. Thank you. So Odudu, the bane of a nation, uh, has primarily about seven pillars, but I will specifically just list five pillars it talks about leadership uh, you know leadership that cuts across all um, sphere of life it also talks about corruption in the society especially as it concerns those in power it also talks about sustainable development and uh, sustainable change precisely and it also talks about youth in politics. In fact, the primary um, the primary thing about Odudu is youth in politics. I'll get to talk more about that when I am um, when I am discussing the plot. It also talks about uh, unity, which is the fifth uh, pillar which I want to talk about today. Unity. So in Odudu, the play is primarily about a community called Ayemeka community. The name Ayemeka is actually a fictional name. There is no place as uh, there is no place called Ayemeka. It's a fictional name. So we have Odudu, who is the main character, the major character. His name is Odudu. He's the leader of the youth. And of course, we have um, the king, um, the king of the community. We have um, other youth. We have um, Odudu's mother, who is called Eka. And we have um, elders of the community. So the play begins with the beheading of um, community defaulter or a citizen that the elders and the king uh, feel that he has defaulted or he is opposing the um, leadership of the community so he's being beheaded in the village square that's how the, the play begins and then it writes on to showing us um, when a certain elder receives bribe for a particular thing that um, needed to be done and he does that in secret in private then we have situation whereby when a car odudu as the mother of odudu go you know went to the market she returned back from the market empty-handed she's a trader and after selling she's supposed to have money to either buy 
food stuff and go back home for our, for our family or money to go back home with but on this said day she returned back home empty-handed with nothing the food that she bought from the market the tubers of yam was were gotten from her by palace guards and she returned back empty-handed with no money and no food stuff for her to prepare for her children so when she got back home this action of the king and his corrupt corrupt elders you know got Odu very angry because it simply means that he will go to bed hungry his younger ones will go to bed hungry his mother will also go to bed hungry so he got Odu very angry and Odu summoned meeting of the youth at where the youth normally meet so the land is filled with hardship there are a lot of suffering in the in Ayemeka community their crops are failing nothing good is happening for Ayemeka the entire community is suffering the community suffers to the extent that the gods of the land decided to remain silent about the issues that have been happening in the land instead when the elders went to seek the um, the opinion of the gods the mouthpiece of the gods told the elders that the gods says the gods say that the solution to their problem the community problem lies within the community they can't find the solution to their problem anywhere else except in the community. So they have to look inwards to solve their own problem. With that, the youth have you know, had their own meetings where they have discussed that they are going to take power from the elders. Because to them, what has been happening in their land is um, a deficiency in leadership from the elders. So the youth believe that if they take over power, they can do better than the elders, than their parents, and their four parents that some of them were. So the youths have concluded their plans to take over power. So somehow, Odudu and some of the primary, some of the leaders of youth are being arrested. After that meeting, they are arrested. And um, there are a lot of other things that have been happening in the community even before um, the play that is in the past before the play started things like the death of uh, the king's son the king's son died mysteriously and uh, his death was um, the king accused the young lady the young lady that was there when the when the prince died who happens to be named Idan so they accused the young lady and on the same day that the palace elders, you know, gathered to, to sentence Idan to death by beheading, as usual as they have been doing in the past, you know, the youth decided to crash into uh, the entire meeting. Of course, the youth did not only crash into the meeting because Idan was beheaded, but because Odudu and a few other youth had been arrested the night before. And of course, we also knew that they were going to be executed because what was happening in the community was that um, the king and his elders, except one elder, Elder Atom, who, was, um, who is being shown as a good elder, he is the only elder that was um, a good elder who was advising the king that things should be done differently, things should be handled differently. So in the process of the elders deciding that Idan should be executed, Odudu should be executed. So they ended up taking all of them to the secret pit. The secret pit is where the king keeps people that are going to be beheaded. The king will keep them in a secret pit. It's like a dark pit. It's a dark pit. There's no light. There's no illumination. It's like a pit. They just throw you in there in preparation for you to be beheaded. So once you are taken to that pit, it means you'll be beheaded. So that's where they, they were to take Idan and Odudu and that was the same day the youth crashed the entire place and a war ensued war between the youth and the palace guards of course and the elders the war led to the death of a whole lot of people the king died the elders died except elder Atom 
Of course, a lot of people died, including from the side of the youth. The youth too, a lot of them died. Some lost their, their hands, some lost their legs, some lost their sight. It was a brutal, bloody war that, um, ev that people from both divide lost. So at the end of the day, Odudu was rescued, Idan was rescued, and Odudu was eventually made the king of Ayemekak. And as he was made the king of Ayemekak, he was a good king. The community felt it that he was a good king. He did a lot of things differently. He was able to free a lot of prisoners. He was able to sponsor a lot of community uh, youth to um, study outside the community so that they will come back and build their community. You know, Odudu was a good leader. But the interesting thing about the story or the play is that at the end of the play, or everything that happened from the beginning of the play to the point where Odudu became a king and he did things differently as a king, it was just a nightmare. Odudu was having a nightmare. So when he woke up from his nightmare, he realized that his mother died that same night. His mother died that same night. The essence of allowing his mother to die that night as a writer was to just tell us that we needed the old generation to slowly give way to the new generation. So I did it on purpose to allow the mother to die. We needed the old generation to give way to the new generation. So by killing the mother and bringing the younger and bringing the younger brother of Odudu to the picture in that particular scene where the mother died, it, I was trying to tell a story that we need the old generation to fade out, including the ones that are good. Yeah, including the ones that are good. Because it's not all of them that are bad. We just need the old generation to move, give way to the new generation. That was the reason why I did that. So all what happened was actually a dream that Odudu had. But of course you can see that it clearly, um, the entire story in the book, the entire story in the book clearly shows what happened a couple of weeks ago in Nigeria, the NSAS protest. But I'm not going to talk about that because that's not why I'm here. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to reach me, you can reach me through my email address that has been displayed now on your screen or you can call my number my office line it is also displayed on your screen so you can reach me through any of those platforms or you can also reach me via my social media handles my instagram handle and my twitter handle are displayed right now on your screen so you can reach me via any of those platforms you can private message me i will respond the book is on Amazon Kindle um, You will find the link to Amazon to the Amazon to get the book on Amazon Kindle on your screen right now And we also have it on Okada books. You also have the link on your screen right now So you can get the book via any of those two Platforms those are the ebooks. We also have the hard copy of the book The hard copy of the book uh, you can get it by calling the numbers displayed on your screen right now uh, it is either you call the number or you can um, private chat the number via WhatsApp. The number displayed on your screen right now. You can get the book through any of those platforms. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for reading my book, Odudu, The Ban of a Nation. It's an interesting book and I know you will not, um, you will not be disappointed when you read it. Just grab a copy for yourself. I want to also thank um, my friend Kadish Ulisa for this opportunity to um, for accepting to do this for me. Thank you very very much. God bless you all as you read the book Odudu, the Ban of a Nation. Thank you, John, for coming on to my YouTube channel. Thank you for sharing this beautiful piece of your book with us. Thank you for having us know about to what you cover in your book so guys thank you for watching this video do remember to like to share to subscribe and turn on the notification button and give me a thumbs up okay